Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with a very special Contrast Plus painting tutorial because today we are painting the dwarf himself, Gotrek Gurnison. Yes, here he is. Isn't he awesome? Love him. He's an absolute powerhouse on the tabletop and, well, I wanted to paint him for a while so I thought I would. So, without further ado, we're going to jump in and start painting him. He has been primed in Wraithbone and, well, colour we're going to be using first, as it seems only right and proper, is Fire Slayer Flesh. I and mean, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be thinning it down with a bit of contrast medium. So what I've done is I've taken two or three brush rolls of Fire Slayer Flesh and just one brush full of contrast medium onto the palette, just to give it that little bit of thinning down and also just to improve the flow a little bit. And well, with all that being said, we're just going to grab that paint on our brush and we're going to start applying it. Now, He's got a fair bit of skin, and well, we're just going to start down here on his on his belly, just like this. Just want to take this a muscle section at a time, getting a nice smooth finish. making sure that you get it in all the recesses. Just like this. So with that done, don't worry about highlighting or layering or anything like that just yet. We are going to colour in a few more base coats before we do the rest of it. And well, the next colour we're going to work on is the hair and beard. Now the colour we're going to make for this is a roughly three parts griff hound orange and one part fire slayer flesh. And we're just going to Paint this very carefully over the top. Of all of his hair and his beard. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Space Wolves Grey and we're going to paint this over the top of his trousers. Just like this. We want to get the upturned part of it as well. So with that done, just whilst we're waiting for that to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some wildwood. I'm going to paint this over his boots, his belt, and the strap on his shoulder guard. Now the boots are going to be darker than this, so don't worry. This is just our pre-shade just here. So with that done, whilst we're waiting for that to dry, the trousers are now dry. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some Ultramarines Blue. I'm going to paint this over the top of the trousers. Now we are just going to avoid the upturned part of the trousers.
So with that done, what we are now going to do is we're going to take some Basilicanum Grey. I'm going to paint this over the top of the shoulder pad, just here, because this is going to be black. So with that done, just whilst we're waiting for that to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down lead belcher. I'm going to use this to paint in all of our silver details. And this is going to include areas like the chain and his wrist things. <laughs> like that. as well as the majority of his axe, excluding pretty much the decorative bits in the middle. The rest of it, we're gonna paint him with the lead belcher. So with that lead belcher applied, we're then going to take some yand and yellow. Not very much, but what we're going to do is we're going to paint this over the top of the kind of flames inside the brazier. And you just want a little amount here because you really don't want them to be like kind of too orange. You want them to be a really nice, bright, fierce yellow. That's why we're just using small amounts here, just keeping it to the tip of the brush. Just like that. Same again. So with that done, just whilst we're waiting for it to dry, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab some black Templar. I'm gonna paint this over the top of his boots and over his shoulder guard. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Rune Lord brass and we're going to use this to paint in all of the remaining metallic details. So we've got the belt buckle, we've got the studs on the back of his belt, we've got the decorative features on his axe, we've got the rune in his hand, the jewellery in his beard. So with that done, all of our base coats are now on, on Gotrek himself. He's looking pretty good. However, we are gonna keep going and we're gonna add some shades and then some highlights. So the color we're gonna be using first is a roughly three parts Basilicanum Gray to one part contrast medium. As before, we're just making a little puddle of Basilicanum Gray and then adding a bit of contrast medium just to improve the flow and make sure that we get a nice smooth finish here. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using this to shade all of the silver. So I'm just going to start down here on the axe. Just like this. And so with that Basilicanum Grey applied, we're then going to take some Fire Slayer Flesh. I'm going to use this to shade 
the Rune Lord Brass. So with that done, Gotrek is now what I would call a war hipster battle ready. He's looking pretty awesome. However, we are of course gonna take him to the next level. And to do that, we're gonna start on all the skin. Now, the first color we're gonna use is Cadian Flesh Tone. And what we're going to do here is we're effectively gonna re-layer over the top of the muscles, just like this just avoiding anywhere where that fire slayer flesh is really settled in the recesses. Just like that. And it adds some warmth back into the, into the flesh. And also just make sure that if you did get any kind of blobs or scratchy bits, you're able to just smooth them out here. So with that Cadian Flesh Tone applied, what we're then going to do is going to make a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Kisler Flesh. I'm going to use this on the kind of brighter parts of the muscles. So for example, just here, on the shoulder, across the top of his pectoral as well. Like that. here on his arm. He's kind of around the outer half of his bicep there. Just a little bit there as well. I'm going to use this across his head as well. Don't worry about highlighting his face with this mix. We're just adding a little bit of brightness So with that mix applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Kislev flesh on its own. We're going to use this to effectively highlight all of the muscles and all of his facial features as well. And so with that Kislev flesh applied, what we're then going to do is going to take some flayed one flesh and we use this as a very, very tiny spot highlight on the sharpest points of his face and his muscles. And the majority of these are around the face. Just want to pick out areas such as that. of his nose, top of his ear just here, 
his cheekbone. Just like this. And so with that done, the skin is now finished. However, we are gonna now just finish off his face by doing his eyes. And well, the color we're gonna be using is Black Templar, just over the top of the eyeball, just in here. Just like that. As far as I can make out, his other eye is squinting shut or is a little bit scarred, but we do just want to add a tiny amount of black. And so with that done, we're then going to take the tiniest, tiniest amount of Screaming Skull. And we're just going to apply this in the corner of his eye, just there. like that. And with that done, we then just want to take a really small amount of Gore Grunt of Fur, not very much at all. I'm just going to use this to add a little bit of kind of a reddish brownie hue to the tip of his nose like that. We're also just going to add this underneath his eyeball. So with that done, it is now time to move on and paint all the hair. Now, the color we're gonna be using for this is Fire Dragon Bright. And well, we're not gonna highlight all of the hair, we're just gonna highlight the most prominent areas because the contrast paint has already done such a good job of shading it and highlighting it for us. All we wanna do with the Fire Dragon Bright is as I say, just pick out areas such as the large parts of his big moustache there. Pick out the tips of his sideburns. Like that. Pick out the braids, the tips of his hair. Kind of down to about a third. But of course you can do as much or as little of this as you like. So with that done, the hair is now finished. So what we're going to do is move on to the trousers. And I'm going to highlight the dark blue areas using some Alatoc blue. Just like this. And so with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some rust gray. I'm gonna use this as a spot highlight on the dark blue, and we're also gonna use this to highlight the blue, well, the sort of Space Wolves gray type areas. So we're just gonna add a little dot of it just there at the top of the knee and just the left-hand side like that. What we're doing, just gonna highlight the upturn. Like so. Similarly again, just here on this knee. A little dot just there. A little corner there. I'm gonna highlight and we're gonna go all the way around. Doing it just like this. One thing that I almost certainly forgot to mention is that we're also highlighting the black of that shoulder guard with the rust gray. So I've done that and well, the last color for this kind of section is to take some Fenrisian gray. And this is gonna be as our little spot highlight on the upturn and also on the black. So just picking out the sharpest points. So 
Okay, with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to very quickly take some Storm Vermin fur. I'm going to use this to highlight the boots. So with that done, the boots are now finished and well, we're going to move on. So the next place we're going to work on is all the silver and the color we're going to be using once again is Lead Belcher. Now what we're doing here is we're basically re-layering because we want these to be kind of quite bright metallics, but we're just going to avoid anywhere where the shade is really settled. So for example, just here on the cuff, I'm just going to paint it across the middle just like that. Same again here. Like that. We are also going to pick out the edges with this lead belcher. Just like this. And of course, we're going to be doing this across all of our details. So, for example, the axe blade as well. And so with that lead belcher reapplied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some storm host silver. We're going to use this to highlight all of our silver details. We're just picking out those edges just like this. So with the silver all finished, just before we do the brass, we're going to highlight all of our brown leather. And the color we're going to be using to do that is Steel Legion Drab. It's a nice subtle little highlight that this gives over the top of that wildwood. It's enough to just give it a little bit more depth. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight all of our Rune Lord brass areas with some Liberator Gold. And we are just going to do a highlight here. We're not going to do a full relay. So we want that kind of really dark color just in there, as you can see, from where the shading has been applied. Just like this. And so with that done, we're then going to take some Canoptic Alloy. I'm going to add this to the sharpest points on all of those brassy gold details. Just like this, just to really make them shine. So with that done, GoTrek is pretty much finished, but as you can see, I've already started doing the next stage and this is totally optional, but it really adds a lot to him. It is, of course, his tattoos. And as you can see, I've already done this one on his head. And well, I was gonna demonstrate how to do the one going across the arm. There is another one on the chest as well, but I'll show you the one on the arm because I think it's possibly the most difficult. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Space Wolves Grey and we're gonna use very small amounts of this as we go. We want a very nice tip on our brush. And what we're going to do here is we're basically going to just draw out using the bicep as our guide. So what we want to do is we want to draw a line, a very thin line with the space wheels grey. And it's not going to be very prominent, but that's okay. That's what we want. We're going to draw a line like that. Then we're going to come down here. I'm going to draw a second line. Going across like that. Basically, that's our guide track. So we want to now follow that line all the way around. Like that. Now we just want to start going across the rest of the arm.
like that for the bottom one. And for the top one. Just like that. So we've got this arm going all the way across. Then what we're going to do is we're going to draw in the design in the middle. Now this is really fiddly. So do just take your time. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to draw a series of X's but with connected up. And one of the simplest ways of doing that is to basically draw now two dotted lines going all the way along. A lot all the way along I should say. So we're just going to very carefully basically draw And sometimes you just need to wash the brush and start again like that. So you didn't have enough paint on the brush and then it dried out. There we go. So I'm just going to start here. There's our first dot. There's our next dot. Underneath it, we're going to draw at the same distance, two more dots like that. And then we want to connect the dots. So with all three of those tattoos now done, as you can see, and again, it's totally optional. You do not have to do that. It is very, very fiddly and it looks very effective without it, but with those done, we are now going to work on the base. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to block in all of the wood, excluding the barrel here, here, and that shield just there. And well, the color we're going to make is a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Black Templar and Wildwood. And we're just going to paint this over the top of all of our other bits of wood. another barrel in there actually. And so with that now done, as you can see, there's a lot of that wood. What we're gonna do is we're gonna paint in the barrels with some wild wood on its own. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Creed camo and we're going to use this to paint in all of the Skaven's robes. And we're going to do two coats of this. So you want this to be nice and dark. So one coat just isn't going to cut it. It's a nice, nice color, but we want it to be a much darker than this. So we are going to do two coats. So just let it dry and then apply a second coat of Creed Camo. So with our two coats of Creed Camo applied, as you can see, we've got a nice dark green. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on and we are going to paint in all of the rat flesh and hair. And the color we're gonna be using first for this is Dark Oath Flesh. I'm just gonna load up our brush here. And we're just gonna start painting it on. You want to get this all over, as I said, both the skin and the hair. And then we're going to darken down the hair after this. Just 
just whilst we're waiting for that to dry in the interests of time, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Nasdreg yellow. I'm going to paint this over this bit of rag just here. Just like that. So again, interests of time, we're just going to quickly do all of the metallics. The color we're going to be using for this is Iron Warriors. We don't need to do any kind of different ones. This is all horrible scaven metal. And so as a final base coat, we're then going to take some skeleton hoard. I'm going to apply this over the little wraps. And ropes scattered about. So there's a wrap there, there's a rope just in there. There's a wrap there, and a rope there, and I think that's it. Yeah. So with that done, the skin is now dry. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to take some gore grunter fur. I'm going to use this, as I said, to darken it down. So what we're going to do, for example, just here on the arm is we're going to paint this gore grunter fur all over the fur. I'm going to take it up the arm as well, like that, round to around about the wrist. Then we're going to very quickly wash the brush. And then we're going to use a clean brush to essentially blend it out. over the hand so you see you get this fade through just like that same again on the fur on their faces bring it up to around about there like that wash the brush and then blend it out i'm going to do the same thing across the top of the head. Just there. Wash the brush. Blend it out. And then similarly, over the top of the nose. Wash the brush. And blend it out. And we're now just going to do this across all of them. And so with that done, we're then going to take some Black Templar and we are going to apply this over the top of all of their eyes. Like that. Like that. And like that. So with that done, it's now time to add some shades to all of the metallics. And the two colors we're gonna be using at the same time are Basilicanum Gray and Fire Slayer Flesh. And basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of alternate between them. So we're gonna take some Basilicanum Gray, first of all, and we're just gonna shade this area like this, just getting it all over that silver there. Put it on this bit here as well, whilst we're here, just like that. I'm just gonna make sure we get all of it. Just like that. Then what we're gonna do, wash the brush, grab some Fire Slayer Flesh. We're just gonna add a little bit of it in. Like that. And then we're gonna move on. I'm gonna shade this guy's helmet. And that looks pretty good, like that. Then we're just going to move on to the barrel. Add a little bit here. Like that. 
that. Wash the brush. I'm just gonna lift a bit of that off. It's a little too strong. Wash the brush again. Because now we're gonna go back to Basilicarum Grey. I'm just gonna put this all over that sword or spear, whatever it was. Just there. Like that. Grab a little bit of Fire Slayer Flesh. And we'll just add this in there as well. Make it look rusted and horrible. So with that shade applied at this point, it's a good idea to color in this negative space just here and just around this corner as well, just so that we've basically got him to a battle ready base. And well, the color I'm gonna use for that is Sterling Battlemire. I'm just gonna very carefully start placing it just in here. Just like this. So with that done, it is now time to add some highlights. And the first one we're going to make is Lead Belcher. I'm going to be using this to highlight all the silver. And so with that lead belt applied, we're then going to take some Strachan green. We're going to use this to highlight our green robes. And next up, we're going to use some Kislev flesh. We're going to use this to highlight our rat skin. And with that done, we then want to take a tiny amount of Mephisted Red. I'm basically going to highlight the eyes. I'm not going to colour in the whole of the pupil. We just want a little bit of it just towards the bottom of each of those pupils. Make them look a little bit sinister and dead. <laughs> with those eyes all done, we're then going to take some Death Claw Brown. We're just going to add a little spot highlight to the fur. like this. So with that done, there are just two things left to do. That is to dry brush all of the remaining details with some Tyrant Skull and then to do the rim of the base, however you show please. So we're just going to take that Tyrant Skull dry brush, we're going to very gently start applying this over the top of all of our remaining details. It's almost just like a spot highlight here. It doesn't matter if you get a little bit of it on the various details that we've actually just highlighted. You just want to be very gentle here. The main thing is you're just creating these little light points here and there. Just make those details pop. Well, what can be said of Gotrek the Slayer? <laughs> That has not already been said a million times before. This is an absolutely stunning little model. I was so impressed when it came out. Really, really, really love it. And he is leaping right off of the page of the books into the tabletop. It just looks absolutely incredible. Really, really, really fun to do. And of course, very transferable to the rest of the Fire Slayers range. This is it, pretty much. This is all you need. 
If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you can now become a YouTube channel member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these absolute bosses have done. And if you just want to shoot me a little thanks, just because you really love this video, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.